interrupting this awesome content to ask you if you visited our website, collegefootballnerds.com, yet, and have you signed up for the best college football newsletter on the internet? It's the Zone Read from the College Football Nerds. We've got some of our own written content in there, as well as curated stories from around the college football world. Some interesting stats that come at you twice a week. It's about a five-minute read. Go check it out, collegefootballnerds.com. All right, Josh, let's switch gears and talk about some football teams in this upcoming season. I want to start with Texas. Um, we've got some people who've asked us for a Texas preview. I don't know that we'll get like full on preview mode for these because we're doing a few of them, but I think there's plenty to talk about with Texas. Um, and, and, and I want to start, it might sound negative, but it's really not negative. It's more of a question. Um, kind of get your thoughts on it. Maybe get the commenters thoughts on what, what's going on here to marry the optimism, which I also have for Texas this year versus kind of where they were last year. And, and, you know, with Queen Ewers, we were, you know, there's a lot of fanfare, crazy good arm, came out, looked pretty good against Alabama, looked really good actually. Um, But if you look at his season as a whole, and, and maybe it's because he was playing a little bit hurt, but the offense for Texas, in spite of having who I think is the best play caller, play designer in college football, they're like 24th in scoring. Um, they lost their their last game 27-20. I think TCU beat them 17-10. to They didn't break 20 against Alabama. Um, yours was 7.4 yards per attempt guy, 58% completion rate, 15-6 to touchdown interception ratio. Looking at that, where do you kind of see the optimism for this year versus the results on the field last year? Because I feel it, and I don't know if you feel it too, but where, where does it come from? It's interesting because I, I, I can never quite put my finger on how I feel about Texas this season, honestly. And, you know, one of the tough things about some of these teams is trying to really gauge where they're at. And for us, for previews, I don't have the ability to see them play anyone but themselves in the spring game, so it's hard to judge. We talk about a lot that we... We find previews particularly hard because we like to base our analysis based on what we actually can see and observe either through watching the game or or through real stats. And again, us with stats, we're always trying to use stats to back up our eyeballs, right? I don't want to say a guy is is a great quarterback if he's a seven yard per attempt guy. And, you know, we may talk about a guy like that at at LSU in a minute where you got to be a little couched in what you say. Um, Texas has been in a weird middle ground and... I think the optimism comes from the fact that the roster on the whole is more complete. Uh, they, they've they been injury-prone the last few years. There was a few years ago when that defense was loaded that I still maintain that had they stayed healthy, that would have been probably a top team, and one of those Herman teams. Um, I can't remember, it was two or three years ago, right, where the, the basically the old defense became a mash unit by about week five, and everybody didn't appreciate that. This roster across the board is pretty balanced, right? Worthy. Uh, is an all-conference level guy trying to push to all-American level. Everybody thought he was going to be the top receiver in the country, I think, in the, in, in the state of Texas last year. And as often the case, we said pump the grapes a little bit and took some heat for it, but we were just trying to say, hey, look, man, it's a big deal to be all-conference moving to all-American, and that's probably where your your goal should be here. We're moving straight to like Heisman level is a little, a little insane or a little unrealistic. And I think expectations went a little down to reality last year because they were an eight and five team, right? And that's, I know your point you're getting at. This was a four loss regular season team, eight and five record. Um, didn't really have a fantastic year, had a solid year uh, if that, but given how many pieces return, nine offensive starters returning, given the fact that the defense has turnover, but I think the talent that's come in in recent years has been better. And just like the Georgias and Alabamas, you start getting more benefit of the doubt from that developmentally they looked a lot better last year and you, you hope you see an improvement again uh you know Bo Davis gets a lot of credit for really changing the mentality of the front at Texas a group that got pushed around in the past started pushing people around a little bit started showing their size and strength and, and so I think that's the positives the the negatives to me like you're saying is you got a quarterback yeah you're bringing him back but he was a 7.4 yard per attempt guy that offense went through B. John Robinson last year and Roshan Johnson and I'm not sure what they're going to look like without them. And, and the last thing, you know, I'll say on this, this little sub point before I turn it back to you to talk for a bit, you know, when you talk Texas football, 
something I often commented on last season was that whether or not they were successful in a game really depended on how much Bijan Robinson was able to be successful. So the Oklahoma game, 5.9 yards per carry, score 49 points. Uh, West Virginia game, 4.8 yards per carry, score 38 points. Alabama, he was held to 2.7 yards per carry, only 57 yards in that game. They only scored 19. TCU held to 2.4 yards per carry, 29 yards, only scored 10 points. And what I saw on film, and I, I took a lot of heat for this when I called it out, and I was 100% right. I don't make negative hot takes. When I make takes like this, it's usually because I really feel like I'm seeing something. Ewer's success early in the year was really predicated on the kind of looks he was getting because of how much attention was being paid by Bijan. The Oklahoma game in particular, they could not stop Bijan Robinson, and then Roshan Johnson was such a good compliment to him that you could never really back off that it gave them a lot of one-on-ones. It gave simple reads to Ewers, and, it, and when things were easy, he was really good. I think the thing that all of us are grappling with is, yeah, they only lost a couple guys on the offensive side of the ball, but... When you had a guy that rushed for 1,580 yards, splitting a lot of time with Johnson, and not playing in the bowl, that's a huge piece. Because schematically, even so much went through Bijan. So much was set up by him. Can the rest of the offense not only contemplate, like, can they not only um, try to make up for what he's lost? But can they actually take a step forward despite losing him? Can they carry the water on their own? It's a big question. And I, I think it's one that's really hard to answer in the preseason, which is why so many of us are struggling with it. Yeah, I think that on one hand, the offense was really confusing to me because I do think that you've got really just such a talent um, in Sark. I wonder, though, we were talking about this before we hit rolling, um, hit record, you know, I heard somebody say this week about, you know, getting a new offense that year one is where you really sort of, you're just figuring it out. Year two is where you, uh, you, you know, you iron out all your wrinkles. And maybe that's what we're going to see with yours this year is, is year two under Sark, not reacting, but proactively knowing where to go with the ball, proactively knowing what he's going to do. Because of all the numbers, the completion percentage is what really concerns me, given how I know Sark is so good at scheming up plays where the quarterback just has to deliver it to an open guy um, because he schemes guys open in a pretty interesting, crazy way. One reason why I think Texas fans should be excited is, one, I don't think the schedule is too tough this year i think the big 12s uh, i think kansas state and tc are going to take a take a step back oklahoma a step forward but maybe not a huge step forward they had four one score five one score losses last year and, and a couple of them like texas tech and oklahoma state i think they blew pretty big leads in those games so there's opportunity if the defense doesn't just go crazy and lose their mind in the second half that they're a 10 and two type of team going into bowl season. So I think that, you know, that can go both ways because you could lose all your one score games that you won, which there weren't that many of. Um, I think there's only one Iowa state. Um, I, I think there's an opportunity in year two, year three with Sark that those close things that we wear down late, get a little bit better. Um, I also think offensively with Isaiah Neor, who is, was really good at Wyoming, and I was really high on him last year before he got hurt. I think that's a weapon that was missing last year on this team um, that, that's potentially going to make the difference in making that quarterback comfortable. We saw this at Alabama. We've seen it at times at Georgia where high-powered offenses without multiple options, multiple dudes at wide receiver really struggle um, because you just you got to be able to put pressure on the defense in, in that way. Um, Josh, let's look – quickly at the schedule I uh, just because I think that you know like I said we talked in the Georgia preview about how Texas and Georgia both potentially play Alabama if Alabama makes it to the SC championship game Texas could actually lose that that week two game in Alabama and still be sitting pretty good um to you know to make the playoffs talk a little bit about how Texas has some room, some breathing room, um, maybe in a way that, that TCU had last year, even though they lost their last game of the season. 
I mean, Texas, I think, gets the benefit of having to schedule Alabama out of conference or having scheduled them out of conference because it just makes the schedule that much more difficult. It gives you that much more room for error. When you go through and look at the Big 12 this year, there's no one that jumps out as being really overly dominant. Um, like you said, TCU is kind of in a rebuild mode, and it's unclear how that's going to pan out. I know they took a lot of transfers, but the more I dug into it, the more I felt like the transfers are going to be more role guys than standouts. So I'm kind of interested to see how they turn out. Kansas State, um, those are teams that sort of work on a cyclical basis where they get more senior-laden and they get good for a year or two, and then they tend to fall off. That, that's what the reality you live in if you're not recruiting at the level that the you know top P5s do. Across the board, I think everything's kind of winnable. Like you said, uh, five losses, all one score. The other flip side of that, though, is there were also a lot of uh, close wins, right? I mean, Iowa State, you win by three. Kansas State, you win by seven. Even the Baylor game was a big win, but it was only by ten. Um, it, you've been in a middle ground, and you've got to take a step forward and, and be consistently better than your competition. And that's really the goal. To me, whether you can make it to the playoff is going to be whether or not you slip up against bad teams. The schedule doesn't have a lot of world beaters. If you're a real top five team, it's very doable to navigate the schedule, even with Alabama, with one loss. And that puts you in prime position. And I think two losses has always been extremely hard to make the playoffs. That would depend a lot on what else everybody else does. Um but certainly with one loss, you're in you're in prime position, I think, to make the playoffs. But again, it's about consistency. And to sort of wrap around to what you were saying before, you know, whether or not you can go up and beat someone like Houston at Houston or BYU or Kansas State or at TCU on a consistent consistent basis comes down to whether the little fundamental things that Texas has struggled with in recent years truly get ironed out whether the mentality really has changed where you're able to assert your physicality because this is an offensive line that was really uh, young um, in a lot of ways, especially at the tackle position last year, uh, and they're going to have a lot more seniority this season. They're going to have the ability to push people around if they improve the way they should. The quarterback position, I'm still unsure of. Uh, my biggest concern there is Ewers, like the Iowa State game, he'd have guys running free deep and he'd just miss them. That's concerning because I don't know that you can fix that. Um, the But if you can get a hold of your reads and just get a better ability to continue to move the ball, and maybe you learn that you don't take those deep shots that often unless a guy is running free, which Sark is going to do for you, but you just take the easy open guy and let him make a play, you're going to beat the majority of people on your schedule not doing anything fancy just by doing that, just because the talent you have on your roster. That's the question. And whether or not... Texas becomes that consistent football team or not, I think is going to determine whether they make the playoffs. And now winning the playoffs is a different discussion. I don't want to go down that road. I will tell you right now, I don't know how much confidence I would have that play that Texas has a good shot to win the playoff. But if you're Texas, you just want to make it. You want to get to where Oklahoma was a few years ago. And then you may, you're going to deal with the same realities Oklahoma did, which is the level of competition really does step up, not just a tier, but two tiers at that level, just because of the nature of football, especially in the Big Ten and the SEC. Um, but right now, can you be consistent enough to win the games you ought to win? Because then you're in, you're in prime position to at least get to the postseason and the playoff playoff world you want to be playing in. Vegas has given Texas nine and a half as their win total, and they gave Oklahoma the same nine and a half, which is interesting given the years that both these teams had last year. Um, Josh, I'm going over that nine and a half pretty comfortably. Um, I think that Texas can lose, you know, Texas, that gives Texas the ability to lose to Alabama, which I don't even know that, that they will. Like, I'm just saying, like, let's look at kind of worst case scenario or whatever. They can lose to Alabama and Oklahoma, which is probably going to be the, the, the second best team on their schedule and still bust that nine and a half. What do you think about that? Make a lot of Texas fans unhappy with me uh, right now, but I'm actually going to take the under. Um, I, I am very high on Alabama this year. I, I don't know that I would pick them over Georgia to win the national title, but they're definitely in my top three. And I think as much as people can sleep on Alabama, they're sleeping on Alabama. This they They're lined up to be more of a classic team. Uh, under Saban's tenure, and that's going to be extremely difficult for for Texas to win because it's the one game where you're going to have the inferior roster. Um, 
the rest of the season, the question is, do you lose two games or not? That's what that over-under is saying. And I, I think they do. Um, I, I, I don't think the quarterback situation is consistent enough. And I don't even mean there are concerns about whether or not Ewers, whoever plays, plays mentally consistent enough. But the thing that concerns me is I saw a lot of, me- lot of mechanics issues with Ewers last year. He's a little weird in his release. Um, he gets kind of bad about his mechanics when he gets put off his spot. And his deep ball can be really sporadic, especially if he's not throwing on rhythm. That's a thing that can put you in a difficult situation in a football game. And when Texas has been in a difficult situation, they have not performed well. So if you're a Texas fan and you say, well, we're, we've changed, the mentality's changed. If, if I see that and that happens, I totally think you're going to go over. Um, but that's a change that needs to happen. And it's a change that right now I haven't seen. So where I'm sitting today, having seen Texas be where they are, looking at Sark's past as a head coach, I think he's a great play caller. I think he can do really good things for a team. We both felt like it's one of the best hires in college football. But for a team that's really got to change its culture and change its mentality, that's asking a lot. And I think without the real playmakers that they need, without, I would say, proven playmakers really outside Xavier Worthy, it's going to be hard for this football team not to find a way to drop one or two games, especially in the Big 12 where offenses are crazy and you end up in shootouts. Um, so I think the 9.5 number is pretty reasonable. I, it's only there because they play Alabama and Oklahoma doesn't. Let's be really clear on that. Um, but, I, you know, I, genuinely I'd take the under. As much as I hate to say it, as much as I think they may be a better football team, again, it's an 8-5 and five football team. They can be a better football team and easily go nine and three or eight and five again. I think the wide receiver room is going to really surprise some people this year. Um, and I just I called Sark winning the Big Twelve in his third year, and I have to defend Sark against all these Ohio State fans that are like he's never won anything as a head of coach. Blah blah blah. I think he gets it done this year. I think he wins the Big Twelve this year. Um, it'll be interesting to see, but here's, you know, I keep turning it back to you, Josh, but I, I think this is a, an interesting topic and we can end on this, but for me, I have this maybe unfounded optimism for Texas this year and I expect them to be really good. And there's the joke about Texas being back, which is different from having optimism about a team. But I think that a lot of people share the optimism that I have and don't necessarily know why. Josh, do you think if they don't hit that nine and a half over this year, a lot of that benefit of the doubt starts to go away with Texas um, and and people join you where you're at? Is this the show me year? It's a put up or shut up year for sure. The the roster is good enough to go 10 and two readily in in the – with this schedule in the Big 12, it's I, I I'm always hesitant to say you should go 10 and two. And again, playing Alabama is such a huge asterisk. Um, same way for like Oregon last year when they played Georgia, right? You know, going 11 and one gets really freaking hard when you play a top three team um, out of conference. But let's just say for conference sake, right? You know, going eight and one in conference is really hard. Going nine zero is really really hard, um, and they've got to go eight and one in conference probably, uh, but they've got the roster to do it. They are better than everyone pretty much. They play Oklahoma again, took two steps back. I think they'll right the ship somewhat, but there's still so many holes on that roster, particularly defensively. I can't see them being really on par with Texas, but this is the year where those all those pieces have got to come together. They've got to be a cohesive unit. They got to play better on a consistent basis offensively and defensively, and Sark has got to show his genius a little bit to give that offense a spark that at times when it needed it, it didn't have last year. Um, So I do think they're going to be evaluated. And I think, to be frank, it's fair to evaluate them on how this year goes. It's going to be be a bit of a referendum uh, on the culture of that program and where the, the direction they're headed. So it's interesting to see, and I don't think any of us know. So if you're a Texas fan, be anxious, be excited. That's all fair. Um, it's a big year for you and you know, doesn't matter what I say, go out and win the football games and prove me, prove me wrong. Right. Um, and that's the thing that they have the opportunity to do. And it's the thing they have the opportunity to fail at. 
and regardless of what happens this season, I think that Texas deserves a ton of credit because they're one of these teams that schedules a big brand name every year. And they're not always good. Like who they schedule doesn't always end up being good because they do it so far in advance. But you can see in their scheduling, they're very earnest in trying to play big boy football and not just, you know, bake in a free win on their resume um, to maybe back their way into something in the postseason. I think they deserve all the credit in the world for that. 